give the way. We never off track. We never off track. We make things happen. The, 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 the not chosen to read most of the time create frustration because it kind of happened to you. If you want to make things, you lead and you, you make things to happen, you lead, you follow. If you just leave the way, sometimes you have to leave the way, but if you leave the way, things will happen. But someone needs to have to make them happen, be the one. Thank you to the Toastmasters. We have people who are going to make speeches around leadership this morning. We're not going to, I'm not going to monopolize the, uh, I'm going to pass it to them. Um, give me a second, something pops up on my screen. <laughs> there it is. Yes. So our first, speech, uh, our first speech of the day will be by Florence. Uh, Florian Florence Cartuno, which is the icebreaker, she will be evaluated by Frank Tonguri, and the second speech will be by Susan. And Julian Otin, uh, it's a level one speech, and Susan will be evaluated by. Sorry. Susan will be evaluated by Dr. Christine Nabirio, who is a DTM. And our educational moment, our educational moment will be by, by Arlena Indra, who is also DTM. Our timer of the day is uh, Ephraim Okelo, the grammarian at uh, our uh, counter will be Ida. Ida Abdul Wahab is um, area E, which is ED, area 15. And uh, of course, everyone will be invited to participate on, on, due, on due time. I'm going to pass it over right away to our first speaker. Over to you. Yes. Hello, neighbor. Just Our hello, has a moment. Florence, sorry. Florence, before you start, to evaluate Florence is Frank, Frank Tonjire. So Frank, would you kindly come and introduce Florence's speech? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry about this. Uh, sorry about this. I, yeah, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. And uh, thanks. Frank, over to you. Frank, you muted. Is Frank there? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster of the day. My role today is to evaluate the first speaker of the day, Ms. Florence Catono. Florence Catono is delivering her first speech the icebreaker titled Free Range versus Close Range. The objective of an icebreaker, Florence, is to introduce yourself to us, to the club, and learn the basic structure of public speech. Florence Cartono free range versus close range. Florence Cartono, you're welcome to the stage. Hello, neighbor. Our ball has fallen over your fence. Please send it. Those are some of the conversations by our children in close range system home. I was raised in a different system in Namumira village, <clears throat> on the outskirts of Mokono district. While growing up, I thought that our parents owned the world and all the things in it. My cousin and childhood friend, Jim Katono, and I played in the village without boundaries. 
I remember a time when Jim cut his head with a panga and blood was oozing out. I had never seen such amount of blood splatter in our garden. With the help of our only first aid, toilet paper, our mother rushed Jim to a nearby clinic. Much to our surprise, we were not reprimanded as we had earlier feared. I guess that's the way our parents were encouraging, encouraging us to discover, make mistakes, and learn from Mother Nature. The nightlife in Namida was like no other. Unlike the children in our close range homes, whose nightlife is entertained by the fantasies of Molly in Denali, our nightlife was our nightlife was with stories. We listen keenly to the stories, riddles, and euphemisms our father shared with our mother. As we sat by the night mat, by the night by the dinner mat, enjoying our favorite delicacy, matoki and chicken, which we had reared, slaughtered, and cooked, we listened to the stories. May he so rest in some peace. Our father worked in the town in the Kampala city as an accountant, and his stories were most interesting. I remember a story he shared with us of a kind thief. Kind thief, you might say. Yes, a man offered to carry the battery, only for him to take the battery to his home, and he vanished. Have you all seen a sign of the truth? Private property, do not trespass. In a village setting, in a free range setting in Namida village, there was no private property. Property was owned by the community. Our uncle Isaac buried all the children in his maroon car. I remember the registration number, UPE 439. The bigger children carried the young ones on their laps. He carried my siblings and I to school from our lady nursery school all the way to my Instagram school. My siblings, Happy, Holly, Noella, and Hanita. The car was his, as it was for the village. During the World Cup, men traveled so far from as far as three villages away to come and watch the match on the only black and white television in the village. It didn't matter who owned the tele. What mattered to them was the unity, the celebration, and indeed you had the goal penalty as they slipped away from sheep liquor. There was accountability. We're all accountable to one another in the free range setting. If your family meets church the following day, the Mughul is as we called him, was there to find out why you had missed church. The elders looked out for the children and reprimanded any children who were up to mischief. They called them to order and reported them to their parents. They did as it is said. The village raised us as the African proverb goes. The lotus masters and guests. Whether to live in a free range system or in a closed range system is a choice only you can make. But it is our duty as parents to give our children the opportunity to explore and get involved in the community they live in. My partner, Steve, and I are very intentional and we have made deliberate efforts to introduce our children, Gabriella, Kolaya, Moses, Abraham, and Solomon to the community in Buate where we back to just Thank you for that. For, thank you for a wonderful speech. I'm calling your evaluator now to Frank. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster. Uh, Florence, I liked your speech. The title was. Uh, superb and it fits in the speech. I liked the way you started 
and the way you concluded. The phrases that you used, like the village raised us, made me feel like the story was mine, having grown up, having been raised by, indeed, um, a village and parents. Then I liked your vocal variety, the statement I've just mentioned. I liked your, I felt you were very present on the stage and you were loud enough. Though I thought uh, at some point that the sound was like not uniform, it was low and high. I don't know if uh, the sound was for my end or your end, but I thought it was like high and up, high and up. So I couldn't um, tell exactly <clears throat> at what point you, whether you, <clears throat> the, the voice was um, a changing or it was uniform. Um, if uh, that is the case, um, if it's from your end, then I would suggest that um, next time you could uh, test the microphone um, before you speak. Um, otherwise, I, I thank you um, for the preparation. I felt that you uh, took um, a lot um, of time to prepare for the speech. Thank you. I congratulate you upon embarking on uh, uh, Toastmasters and uh, your um, delivering your first speech. It's been superb, and I encourage you to keep it up. Thank you, Florence. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank, thank you, Frank. Thank you for the great evaluation. Thank you, Florence. Uh, to, the, to the audience, anyone wants to evaluate uh, Florence? You it's, um, yes, raise your hand and... <clears throat> Anyone to evaluate Florence in addition to the main evaluator, to Frank? We, we come palace some risers, so we're not shy. <laughs> we... <laughs> yes. Uh, raise the hand or, uh, I mean, physically or uh, on, on, on Zoom. Yes, yes, Arlene Inra, please, please go ahead. Yes, I, I just want to say how I like the part in which she was talking about the soccer and how everybody was very excited about it. And uh, I think that was a very nice story. <laughs> And uh, just feel free to really show your excitement even more, how they can even jump a little bit <laughs> up and down, or I don't know. That is a nice story. I like it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alina, for, 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 for the evaluation. Uh, checking the chat. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, Yes, let me say, Frank, uh, uh, Florence, you, you, you did a great speech for, for an icebreaker. I like the story. I like the way you brought it. And I like uh, especially um, the way you, you started it with uh, really, with the, enthusiastically, I appreciate it personally. Uh, keep that up. On the, on, the, on the other side, I, was, I could feel a little bit of anxiety. Let it flow. Don't, 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 uh, yeah, let it flow. Otherwise, when you have the anxiety and you show it, it's felt by, it's felt by, the, by, by the public. Otherwise, you're great, keep it up. 
Um, we go, before we move to the to the next evaluator, let me call Aida. Aida, the grammarian. Can we say? Can you say one word about uh, some uh, one minute about the word of the day before we continue? We just skip it. We need to. We still it with those masters and the grammar remain very important. The English language remains very important. So over to you to give us the word of the day, and we, we shall be using it all over until the end. Please. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. As a, as a grammaria, my responsibility is to pay attention to the speakers today, to listen carefully of, the, of your language usage. I will also take a note of the improper language as well as any outstanding words, quotes, or sayings that you may share on your speak. For today, I have selected one word for you to add on your dictionary. You might have already known it, but I encourage you to use it more oftenly so that we are able to add one more thing in our uh, dictionary. The word of the day I selected is vigorous. It is an adjective and the meaning is strong, healthy, or full of energy. You can say that I have a vigorous morning this today. Or an example using this word is what a tall, vigorous and muscular man he is. So I can invite everyone to use today's word of the day while they are making a speech. Thank you. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Aida. Thank you, Aida. Uh, again, Aida is um, uh, ED15. Uh, um, ED15. Aida, thank you for the word of the day. We're going to have a vigorous day. A vigorous day starting with a vigorous morning meeting today. Speaker number two, um, we're going to the speaker number two, the evaluator is uh, Dr. Um, sorry, Dr. Christine Nabiru. Please, please introduce us uh, with the speech number two. Thank you. Good morning, good evening, and good night for those that are into their night. My role today is to evaluate Suzanne, and it gives me so much pleasure to see how vigorously she has taken to this Toastmasters journey. Susan is almost completing her level one. And Susan's speech today is about getting us to get some evaluation that, and feedback that we can give to her to improve on a Toastmasters speech delivery. Susan, wants us to look out for whether the audience is engaged and interested as she delivers a speech. So audience, make sure that you are alert to that. Susan also wants to know, is she doing well with her eye contact? Susan or team, Shiro by Grace, Shiro by Grace, Susan, or team. Shiro, by Grace, pressing on to my best self. Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, good morning to you all. From an early age, I had clear academic and career goals. And on, I pressed onto my goals, vigorously achieving my doctorate at age 30. I also got married quite early. I was only 23 and my handsome Arthur was 25. I had recently enrolled in graduate school. Six years later, while a third year doctorate student, I delivered my first son. Continuing with my doctorate studies and graduating heavily pregnant with my second child, 
and yet still passionate about my career growth. After my second maternity leave, I returned to work with so much vigor, ready to continue with my personal and career growth. Do I at times feel tired? Get overwhelmed? Exhausted? Yes, yes, oh yes. Many days I felt that way. But in fact, this did not show because many people, very impressed with my growth, asked me, how do you manage to get so much done? <laughs> Privately, I was struggling. I was struggling. And I kept asking myself, how do I get to improve things? How do I maintain my balance? And finally, stumbling on the wheel of life renewed my vigor, made me realize I had found answers to a question many were asking. And so I penned down Shiro by grace. Shiro by grace. Ladies and gentlemen, Shiro by grace is my autobiography, zero to 40 years old, with lessons for the career woman, lessons for the distressed person, lessons for the young people, and lessons for parents. Let me share with you a few of these lessons for the career woman. Deliberately, Embracing the wheel of life and defining its spokes will save you a great deal of trouble. The wheel of life, ladies and gentlemen, is just like the wheel of a car, the wheel of a motorcycle, the wheel of any vehicle with so many different spokes. And you, for your wheel of life, get to define the spokes that are important to you. Is it your career? your faith, your most significant other, your children or other family members, your health, your recreation, your friends, your community service, you get to define the different spokes. And even more important, you get to align and balance them out. Just like no vehicle will have a smooth ride with unbalanced wheel, so your life will only have a smooth ride when you pay attention to all the spokes. A few lessons to distressed people. Having been single-handedly raised by my mother, five siblings, the dysfunction and the struggles were real. But her determination and her diligence, hard work, pushed us to a better situation. This was clear to me that if we continue to trust in God and no situation will remain permanent. A few lessons to young people. Your talent, your talent is absolutely important. Do you know your talent? Are you working to improve your talent? My own talent and strength was in reading. I love to take time reading. And boy, oh boy, did I throw my energy into my books. And the good grades and good performance won me favor before people that mattered. Paying attention to your talent always pays off. Hard work, focus cannot be replaced with anything. To achieve, we must work hard. And a few lessons to parents. Extracurricular activities, the co-curricular activities like sports, music, dance, drama, art are all very important. They add value to children in ways that normal academics don't. And then chores, chores, chores. Every child, boy and girl, needs to take responsibility with their chores. 
This change in responsibility from an early age that is applicable at all levels of life. And the faith factor is absolutely valuable. For when there is a shaking in one's life, if they have grown to have a faith in a higher power, they are able to remain stable. Finally, shared experiences and time with our children create so many precious memories. Ladies and gentlemen, I could carry on sharing more lessons from Shiro by Grace. But because of time, I'll stop here. These lessons have impacted me personally, in my family, in my career, in so many different areas. And I'm convinced there is a value in this for others as well. Pick up your copy of Shiro by Grace from any of Uganda's bookstores, or you could get it from me. Thank you for your kind attention. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Susan. Great. I'm, for sure, I'm going to take my copy from you or from the, from the, from the bookstore. Thank you. Um, doctor, for your evaluation, over to you. Dr. Christine Nabiru. What a speech. You will all agree with me that Susan must have gotten the memo about the word of the day. Vigorous, my, was it vigorous? Well done, Susan. You took it on, took to the stage with such vigor. We felt the energy and you immediately engaged us. We wanted to know more. What's she vigorous about? You wanted me to talk about the eye contact, Susan. You did that well. You have mastered that skill. You kept looking in the eye of the camera as you delivered. Well done. Audience awareness was another area you called out and you wanted me to talk about. And for this, I kept looking from one member of the club at this meeting to another guest, I could see guest Mickey smiling the way so calmly. I kept seeing Ida just mesmerized. And I saw Teresa hmm, nodding his head. And I loved Dostmaster Halina Indra. She kept nodding, she kept smiling, she kept pushing you on with your speech. She almost was helping you deliver. If you could look at her, you would be encouraged as a speaker that you actually are making that point. Moses kept nodding. And at some point, I guess the Toastmaster of the day had his fingers to his chin, meaning that you engaged us so well. Well done, Susan. Time up. How much time did Susan take? How much time did Susan take? Uh, As I move on to, Susan to say, she, 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 she ran out of time by two seconds. By two seconds? Yeah. Susan, well done, just two seconds. If it's two seconds after seven, then you are well within time because you have some spare time. What would you improve? I would say, one of the things I wanted to say at some point was the most. A uh, one Richardson has said, the most important part of speech is the pose. But as I was writing it, towards the end, you gave us a good pose. So I would say, we'll talk about the rest. Well done, Susan. We all went away with a lesson. Yes, I'm going to pick up my Shiro by Grace. Over to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Dr. Christina Biro. Uh, thank you. Uh, from the fellow Toastmaster and uh, guest, uh, the evaluation for Susan's speech. 
contigo. Isso. You can raise the hand uh, virtually or physically for various Susan speech. I think we have Alex's name on the chat. Uh, yes, please. Please raise the Moses. Uh, hi, Drissa. I put my name in the chat. I would like to give Susan some uh, feedback. Okay. Uh, it's Alex. Okay, Alex, go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Susan. Amazing, amazing speech. Wow, Susan, every time you come to speak, you seem to have a different topic or a different project you're working on. So this is just testament to your versatility. You are on to many things and we could tell from your speech that you are writing a book and such an early book you're an author at an what looks like an early age and you've been a high achiever in your life it looks we can tell we're so glad to have you at Kampala Sunrise because we kind of live vicariously through your life and stories what I like about your speech was number one the pro is for the easy pro to have you spoke about your book and it was glad that you had it and you could see it so it looks like you speak about something that you actually already have and i think you even told us probably how we can get it or we have we even have your contact we can probably get a copy from you and i saw that those master of the day can't wait to buy a copy what i saw you trying to do intentionally was your vocal variety a point when you said finally stumbling upon the wheel of life I, I, I feel that I, I could feel that you are really emphasizing that field of life. And then also when you took us to your, your learnings in your story, when you said chores, 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 I could really see that you're emphasizing. It's something I'm, I'm identifying in your speeches that you really make some intentional emphasis and well done, keep at it, and it will start coming naturally in your speeches. I love your stories whenever you come to speak and I look forward to your next speech, Susan. Thank you very much. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to evaluate uh, Susan? Uh, great, so, so Susan. I think uh, you, you you had a great um, a great a great speech uh, and. Um, that's wonderful. I I, I, can, I could feel the connection between the, the, the content of the speech, yourself, and the book. And this is wonderful. It's uh, transmissible. And uh, I guess this is what uh, the, the, the speech meant. And um, on the improvement side, what I can say is, um, yes, keep improving that connection, but know where you 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 play not being too 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 in it because at a certain point you have to be able to detach yourself from the audience so that you can continue normally otherwise uh, the emotions can take can take over so otherwise uh, I mean it's a positive but at a certain moment you, you, you need not to too far in it. Uh, otherwise, you, you, this is this is um, a great speech. It's a great speech, and it leads us to another great moment of our our meeting of this morning, which is the the education moment, which will be by Arlina. Arlina Indra is. Uh, let me introduce you to Arlina. Arlina is, uh, is currently taking advantage of the online meetings to hold uh, three officers position, three officer positions this, uh, this year. She's on one side, VP education at trainers and coaches advanced online. She's club president of uh, Jakarta Bahasa, sergeant at arms at uh, Manhasset Fort Washington in New York, USA. So it's Grace, all this taking the online opportunities. She joined to Toastmasters in October 1999. And when you check her list of offices held at Toastmasters in the profile, you see that the club officer role she has taken. 
She has this art spot for the role as VP education. And um, she really wants members to progress in the pathway. And she wants members to take opportunities to train their leadership skills. And she's really here to share that with us. No, no more words, let the water flow from the mouth of the fish. Alina Indra, over to you for the educational moments. Thank you. Thank you very much for this beautiful introduction. For people who want to ask questions, you are free to uh, Zoom text uh, Alex Agaba so he can select the questions to be asked to me. And indeed, I would like to share with you what I have experienced as a club president first, then take one question and after that, if time permits, I would like to share some more about some of the roles that you can um, take as a club officer in which you can actually practice your leadership skills and communication skills. So first, what did I experience before and during my leadership as a club president. I remember this conversation, December, 2020. My club president said to me, Harlina, be patient. He will eventually understand his task as a club officer. Give him at least six months to adjust himself to his new task. At that time, I was the club secretary and I was like, what? Six months? If my life was a cartoon movie, the smoke would come out of my ears because I was fuming. I was like, hmm, if I am the club president, I will do it differently. I would say, uh, you do this, you do that, and um, be careful. Words of my club president were ringing again in my ears. Hardly now. Toastmasters International is a voluntary organization. No one get paid here. If you use your focal force, then all club officers will run away and they won't come back. Yeah, that was December, 2020. At that time, I already decided to be the next club president. But I was still kind of afraid, yeah. I had three fears. I was afraid that I won't be patient enough. I was afraid that I was not trustworthy enough. And I was afraid that I won't, that I will not listen enough. Okay, people say, face your fear. Run towards the roar. You know, if somebody from the Toastmasters leadership says to you, hey, you there. Come here, you want to know about leadership? You want to grow? Do become a Toastmasters leader. So I ran towards that roar and fast forward about one year later, here I am. I'm in my 10th month as the club president and I have to admit that I sometimes run towards the roar, sometimes I just walk towards the roar and sometimes I just talk towards the roar. So let's start with the good news. First, my fear about patience. I never thought that I had that much patience. Okay, we had already our first EXCO meeting before our term in June 2021. And we already set up our plan for our preparation for our weekly Saturday morning meetings. So the VP Education was supposed to invite all the members to subscribe at our online agenda. The VPPR was supposed to set the flyer on Wednesday on all the WhatsApp group and social media. And the SAA was supposed to put all the Zoom links on Friday, the day before the meeting. Did everything go according to plan? Yes. Well, one to two days. Uh, yeah, besides the target. So sometimes I uh, reminded them privately. Not sometimes, often. 
And sometimes I just dislike this. Calm down, calm down. Patience, patience. But you know, the patience, it paid off. And indeed, after about three months, all the officers, they were able to find their rhythm each uh, on their own way. Like, for example, the SAA, she was supposed to do it on Friday, but then she felt that it was more comfortable to put the link on Thursday, and so on and so on. And I was glad that I was patient enough and I didn't use my focal force. So, hey, I ran towards the roar. What about Trustworthiness. Well, uh, the way how you can build trustworthiness is, for example, by the way how you communicate with the members. My predecessor, he was so eloquent in his language when he speaks, when he also writes. Me, uh, Indonesian was my fourth language. And all my writings were edited by my SAA. And I also let my other club officers open and close the meeting so that I don't have to do it. So I ran away. But can I do that the whole time? Of course not. This one, I still have to face my fear. So for this one, I'm still walking towards the roar. And what about listening? Well, I do love to listen though to my own voice. You know, one day, my extrovert in immediate past president, he said, Harlina, you know, we are Zoom, our ex we should have this Zoom meeting together, you know, like a bonding experience. Oh yeah, this is almost year end. We should do it on the 31st of December. I was like, yeah, because I'm an introvert, you know, not really into that kind of stuff. And then the extrovert VP education was like, yeah, we could go do, do some games or something. And I was like, yeah. And my SA was like, oh, New Year's Eve. I don't want to talk about New Year's celebration. I don't want to talk about New Year's resolution. I don't want to talk about Toastmasters. And I was like, but what are we going to talk about? Because in our WhatsApp exco group, we are really discussing a lot, but it was all about Toastmasters. Reluctantly, I invited all the exco members one by one, privately. Do you want to come? Do you want to come? Do you want to come? And to my horror, all but one accepted my invitation. And we did the Zoom meeting on the 31st of December at 9 o'clock in the evening. And yeah, I have to admit, it was fun. We talked about our personal interests, about our favorite food. And I was glad that I listened to my club officers, even though reluctantly, I have to admit. So here, I really learned how to listen. So ladies and gentlemen, running towards the roar, the roar who says, hey, do you want to grow? Do you want to learn more about yourself? Why don't you practice? Leadership skills and public speaking skills and communication skills, ABS VP education or Sergeant at Arms or VPPR. So what do you think? When your leaders come in roaring to up towards you and say, let's become a leader, let's grow together. Would you do it? Now I'm open for one question. Thank you, thank you, Alina. Thank you, thank you very much. Open for is, one question. Is there a question? Yes, let me ask you. Let me ask you. How do you? I mean, we, we, I, I, how do you manage your different roles as a leader? Uh, is the difference? You're taking opportunity of the of the online uh, environment mm -hmm. that goes with also the time differences like we have here. How do you manage this conflictual leadership roles? Uh, and both, I mean, 
I, I know it needs to be vig you need to be vigorous, full of energy, but how do you do it? Thank you. It would be better. That's a very good question. I have to admit that in the beginning I had some problems because my in the, the, the club in which I'm the club president is every Saturday morning. And the one in which I'm a VP is Thursday, twice a month. So it's close, it's quite close. So therefore it's better to block everything. So Saturday is my Toastmasters day. Sorry guys. Okay, uh, family, sorry family. <laughs> I will come to your house on Sunday, but not on Saturday. So I really have to block it. Saturday is it. And also Thursday, Thursday and Saturday. So those two days are off the limits for other activities. And I also try not to bother my fellow club officers too much. So I also say, okay, uh, Monday, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I will not bother them. And then I start bothering them on Wednesday <laughs> and Thursday. So that they are not too fed up with me as, because we have to go for the long run. We have to hold it for one year. So that's uh, how I do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Indra. Uh, yeah. A question from, uh, from uh, the fellow postmaster and guest, a question to Alina. I um, how much time you have do I have left for part two? Uh, Just a moment. eight more minutes, Alina. Eight more minutes. Yes, we'll eight more minutes, okay. Yeah. Okay, so eight more minutes okay, to speak. Moses, Moses. I, think, I think we can go ahead. So, so considering the time, I'll go ahead. It's okay. Okay. So for some of you may be thinking, okay, I would like to be a club officer, but it will take one year. And what if something happens in my personal life and I cannot do it? So one, I can share a little bit about what happened in my... Uh, in my term as a secretary, that was uh, one year ago. We started in July and all of a sudden, in September, our club president became ill. Can you guess the diseases that he had? Yes, he had COVID. And for five weeks, he was off. However, just before he was absent, we had an exco meeting. He was not very well that time, but he was really committed to that exco meeting. And now I understand why, because in that meeting we could discuss, we could, uh, we could voice our opinions, and also we can make an action plan. And it is that action plan that actually kept us going, even though our leader was sick. Okay, we were led by our PP education, but that was uh, where I felt how our club president was really committed to guide us through to action. So that is what I learned as a secretary. What I also learned as a secretary is to listen very carefully, to write more and actually help people. Because first I'm the one who makes the notes, the notes during the meetings. I also learned how to ask for help. Like uh, if I cannot make it to the meeting, then I ask for help, can you help me? Because usually I don't really like to ask for help. I want to do it by myself, but here I can. And I also learn how to help other people like the VP education, because the secretary is supposed to help the VP education if they have, uh, if they have are absent. So for one month, I was VP education. And there I learned to motivate people, to ask them, to listen to them, ask them about their goals also persuade them to take roles so that can reach their goals. So I learned how to communicate with people. And now I'm the club president. My secretary doesn't help the PPE. I help the PPE. So you see, every exco is different. Who is the alternate, who is helping who? It, it depends on sometimes the strengths and uh, Sometimes, like me, I'm not so good in uh, make in doing Canva, but I want to learn. So that is why I'm helping the PP public relation, even though it's actually not really in my role. 
But this year, as a club president, I was really very lucky as a, because my VP membership, she really knows how to follow up guests. Wow. She texts them privately. They, she asks them what are their needs. She sh shows them how pathways can fulfill their needs. And she asks them how. Um, she asks them whether they want to be a member. Yeah. That simple question, do you want to be a member? She really asked that question. And once she told me, you know, Halina, I cannot make it to this meeting. There is this lady called, let's say, Lily. And she already came twice. After the meeting, can you ask her to become a member? And you know, guys, I'm introvert. I was like, yeah, you asked me to ask this Lily girl to be a member. <sighs> okay, I will do it for you. So I reluctant. So after the meeting, we were still hanging around. We didn't directly close. We did tell them, hey guys, the meeting is over, but we still hang around. And then I said, Hi, Lily. Oh, I've seen you several times at the meeting. What do you think? Do you want to become a member? And you know what she said to me? I thought you never asked. I was like, ah. Then I gave her the number of my VP membership. Here's the number. She will tell you what to do. So you see, as an exco, we learn not only leadership, we don't only learn about communication, but also how to come out of our comfort zone. Even though reluctantly, but hey, I can do it. And so we learn and we grow together. And together, as an exco, we can grow and run towards the roar together. So that is what I learned in exco. Questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I, I think really give given some substance and vigorously to how to run the role for those who, are, who want to take leadership roles and are still hesitating. You've really give a lot of a lot of tips, a lot of advices that you can take from. I invite everyone to go back and listen again to what she has said. There is a lot of things in it to, to, to how you can run toward the role and take leadership roles in your club. Thank, thank you. I think- um, I see uh, a raised hand. Yes. Uh -uh. There is an hand half. I, I want to, to go there and we can continue. Indra, you want to have the word? I had a question for Halina and to thank her so much. Very interesting delivery makes uh, leadership and going to running towards the role <laughs> look like uh, fun. Uh, I've also been part of XCOMs where not everybody is ready to run towards the role. Uh, they swear in and we start the business and then uh, somewhere people disappear, life happens. So have you been part of such as XCOMs and what have you done when you are the leadership? And half your ex cop is is not uh, is, is work is running away from the role. <laughs> it's actually happening right now. So it was in August when August 2020, 2021, in when our the secretary all of a sudden showed sign like uh, oh I cannot do this anymore, and um, I was like oh gosh is it be Am I too, too much of a dictator or so? But she just gave up. And at that time, I was lucky that uh, I could find replacement. However, in, Jan in December 2021, my PPPR said, I'm so sorry, I, I'm going to college. I cannot do it anymore. And there, then I realized how much work actually PPPR is because we have social media that we have to maintain. We post three times a week on Instagram. And I was like, who is going to do that? I cannot give it to one person. So we, we divided the work. Luckily my SAA, because we are still online, she does the weekly flyers and um, I do the recaps. And I ask every, <laughs> sorry, I have to laugh about it, but I ask every officer to make a caption. So. You make a caption this week, you make a caption for next week. 
So the caption is actually already uniform. The beginning and the ending was already uniform. I only need two sentences that are related to the theme of the meeting. So that is how we did it. And then our my treasurer, he makes the flyers for the holidays. So it's spread all over, but it's uh, it's uh, it's a bit hard. It's tough because we only do Instagram. I have to admit, I'm really neglecting the the Facebook, and I'm still neglecting the YouTube. I'm very <laughs> envious of your YouTube. <laughs> so we're doing the best we can. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Dr. Christina Abir, I think, is also the question, and it's also thank you very much, uh, Indra, for, 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 for this. We're going to continue. Thank you for a great, uh, vigorous educational moment. We are running down. We have uh, Ephraim Okelo. May you come with the report for the timing, then we go with Aida for the, uh, at the Grammarian, and uh, We'll hand it over to Mr. President for the uh, continuation and today toward the end of the this meeting, this morning meeting. Ephraim, over to you. Uh, he's not there, you know, connect. We can hear you. Thank you, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Most of the speakers use their time really well, but I think I want to just highlight the names of the ones that did use time well. Uh, number one was Susan. She used her time by two seconds. I think that is something she can improve on. Two seconds is not so much. Then uh, her evaluator, Nabiro Christine, you used your time by more by 20 seconds. I think you have a lot to improve there. 20 seconds is too much. Then um, Halima, Harina Indra was on time. Uh, she used her time less. Okay, she had to 35 seconds on her time. Then um, I think those are the only people who are who didn't use their time really well. Eh? The rest of the people used their time well. So we had Christine, we had um, Suzanne and her evaluator. They're the only ones who didn't use time well. Thank you. Thank you, Ephraim, for the, for the timing. Aida, over to you for the report on the, on the grammar use. Okay, thank you, Toastmaster of the Day. The word of the day was, as you know, ZGS, meaning, uh, meaning, meaning strong, healthy, or full of energy. The word of the day was used totally 11 times. Uh, the first user I would like to acknowledge was our visitor from Japan, Toastmaster Tohisha. Uh, the second user was our first uh, the evaluator of the second speaker, uh, DTM, Dr. Christie. She used it three times. And our second speaker, Toastmaster Susan, used it twice. And I have heard Toastmaster of the day, uh, Toastmaster Derisa, using it one time. So I have used it already for three times. So totally in this session, it has been used times. So regarding the, the amazing or good phrases that I have quoted from some of the speech is the village rest up with a very good way of uh, language usage. Embarking a Toastmaster journey is one of the things that really cut, catched my eye. Still working toward the role is also so an interesting phrase to use in a sentence. Some of the errors that I have noticed and with suggestions is one of the speakers says, let me share a few tips of my mind. When you try to impose or influence an idea, 
you, we encourage uh, or I personally uh, encourage people to use strong words like let me share some crucial or very important point and the other thing that I have said is when you the speaker also used a word like good performance in order to show the status of her uh, her performance but I would rather choose her to say an outstanding performance or my excellent performance in order to have a higher influence and the other areas that I have noticed is uh, one of the evaluators said I love your speech whenever you come to speak and I will suggest to rephrase it by I love your speech and I look forward for your next speech or for your next presentation. Uh, the other error that I have noticed is we did Zoom meeting. I would rather prefer we posted a Zoom meeting or we had a Zoom meeting. That was it from my side. Thank you. Back to you, Postmaster of the Day. Thank you very much, Aida. Um... Again, Ida is ED15. Thank you, she was the grammarian of the day. The meeting of this morning, I think, was a very a vigorous meeting. And uh, the purpose of the education moment was to raise the awareness on the leadership opportunities in the club, at the club level. And I believe that the education moment, how things went, uh, it will encourage each one for this, for, for this opportunity to take Front word role. The speech one was um, a, 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 a icebreaker, which uh, was, I believe, vigorous. Thank you, Florence. The second speech was um, uh, the level, the, the autobiography of uh, of uh, the speaker number two, which also went uh, wonderfully in a vigorous manner, Susan. The educational moment we had, we, we were honored with uh, Alina, who told us when, how she went, I mean, within the last years, navigated in the Toastmasters organization, which is, uh, and she shared with us a lot of tips. Everyone can go back to, the, to that, uh, to, to the recording and learn again from, from what she said. So overall, this morning meeting, I believe, was a great, I'm at the end of the great meeting from all over the world, from the east to the west. I mean, it's really sunrises, Kampala sunrises, which this was a global meeting. Congratulations to everyone. I'm going to pass it to President Moses for uh, uh, to take control and for the remaining. Thank you, everyone. Moses, over to you. Thank you so much, Drissa. Can we give Drissa a big round of applause all across the team? Everybody, please. Thank you, Drissa, for steering us through the meeting, all the speakers, our guests of the day, the evaluators, and other role takers. And everyone during this meeting, I'd like to thank you so much. We've had a very good, good, good session. Allow me just to recognize the people who joined us today. Our area director, Jesse Aineviona, is with us. If you can just say hi, Jesse, for the people who may not know you. Thank you, Moses. Pleasure to be here, as always. Like our Toastmas of the Day has said, when you attend a sunrise meeting, it's like a global meetup. You know, you get to meet people from across the globe, and it's always a pleasure to see the diversity, the variety, the creativity that you bring into the meeting. I have been highly inspired by the speakers and our guest speaker. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for bringing great insight and wisdom to our clubs here in Uganda. So thank you so much. Uh, back to you, Moses. And uh, looking forward to always visiting Kampala Sunrise, a, way, a home away from home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jesse. Always a pleasure to have you here. We never end a meeting without organizing our immediate past division director, but also the, one of the most passionate members of Kampala Sunrise, uh, uh, founders of Kampala Sunrise, uh, our sponsor, and the person who has been pushing us to grow. Dr. Sunshine, next Wednesday we have a demo meeting at UNRWA uh, as part of uh, your push to us. So 
we are beginning to step out. So we'll be having a demo meeting at, at Uganda National Roads Authority as we begin to see if we can set up a club at UNRWA. And if you can just say hello once again to the people uh, and then as, as we close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just for the announcement to each and everybody, please note that we'll be opening up for club officers uh, at, the, at the club. The announcement will go out tomorrow. And at our next meeting, we have two meetings in May. One of them is a speakerthon on 21st of May. And on the 28th, we also have another meeting. So we have two packed meetings in May, additional meetings. So we'll have three in May to ensure that all our, all our members can catch up with their pathways, be able to complete as much of the education journey. And so we have, we look forward to having all of you join us on the 21st, Saturday 21st and Saturday 28th. Both of these will be uh, morning meetings and they'll be happening uh, at, from 8 a.m. Uganda time uh, to 10 a.m. Uganda time. They'll all be virtual so you can join in all around the world and look forward to having you join us. I'd like to thank all our guests who joined us. I will be opening the meeting uh, at the end of the meeting to allow you to say hello to us. We have a number of members joined us from uh, one of our newest clubs uh, where the team led by uh, the division director went to meet them this week. Uh, the Rotary Club uh, Kampala, Kampala South Toast Masters. I believe I hope that's the name right. Kampala South Toast Masters. Thank you for joining us. Our guests who joined us all the way from uh, Japan. A pleasure having all of you here and all other visiting Toast Masters. Thank you. We've been privileged to have you here. The Exco will stay behind after, after five minutes of uh, engagement with the team. They'll stay behind for a meeting with our division director at this time. Allow me to end the meeting and thank all of you for being with us today and go and have a vigorous day wherever you'll be. God bless. <laughs>